Hi, I'm Tema Pelletier from the Teach to Learn Foundation for the Integrated Algebra Review Series. So today I will be teaching you about the properties of real numbers. I'm going to be listing 10 of the basic properties that you really should know by the end of uh, the year for Integrated Algebra. Alright, let's begin. Just as a recap, since these are properties of real numbers, you should know that most of the numbers you work with in integrated algebra will be real numbers. However, there's pretty much just one exception that you'll come up with uh, relatively often. And that is uh, square roots that are not perfect. For example, square root of 3. It's not perfect. It comes out to be this long, cumbersome decimal that goes on forever. Uh, not like the square root of 4, for example, which is a perfect square root because it's 2. 2 times 2 equals 4. Okay. So, now that we know what real numbers are, let's get on to these properties. The first property is the commutative property of addition. The commutative property of addition states that a plus b is equal to b plus a. For all of these equations, we're just going to set a equal to 2, b equal to 3, and c equal to 4. I'll just write this over here. This is so it makes it a little bit easier to understand. We're using constant variables. Okay, so this is basically a common sense thing that you probably already knew without even realizing it was the uh, commutative property of addition. It states that a plus b equals b plus a because 2 plus 3 equals 3 plus 2. 2 plus 3, 5 equals 3 plus 2, 5. If you have two apples and somebody gives you three more, it's the same as somebody is the same as you having three apples and somebody giving you two more. It just makes sense. Okay. The next property that we're going to discuss is the commutative property of multiplication. This is another one that you probably know already. It states that a times b is equal to b times a. So plugging in our variables, we have two times three equals three. And this one also is, I mean, obviously it's going to come out to be the same answer. 6 equals 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. This one also makes sense because if you have three groups of 2, it's the same as having two groups of 3. All right. So the, that was the commutative property of multiplication. The next property we are going to discuss today is the associative property of addition. The associative property of addition is a plus parentheses b plus c equals parentheses a plus b plus c. So a plus parentheses b plus c equals parentheses a plus b plus c. Plug it in. This is another one that makes sense. And it actually links right back to the commutative property of addition. I'll show you how. 2 plus 3 plus 4, excuse my handwriting, equals parentheses 2 plus 3 plus an addition 4. And basically, this relates back to the commutative property of addition because the commutative property of addition states that it doesn't matter what order you add the numbers in, right? So this is all parentheses really do in an equation is change the order that you're supposed to solve it in, right? So because of PEMDAS parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, parentheses comes first, so you have to do them first change the order of the equation. So we have 2 plus 7 equals 5 plus 4. This is correct. It comes out to be 9 equals 9. Okay. So that one is linked right to the, uh, right to the so commutative property of addition. Now, the next property of real numbers is the associative property of multiplication. That means that a times parentheses b times c is equal to parentheses a times b times c. Okay? So this one is actually linked right back to the commutative property of multiplication. All right, let's see how. 2 times 3 times 4 equals 2 times 3 times 4. Because again, parentheses only change the order of the equation, and since the order doesn't matter in multiplication, 2 times 12 will end up equaling 6 times 4. They will both come out to be 24. Okay, 
The next property is the distributed property. And this is a really important one that's probably going to come up a lot more than you think. This one's a little, a little trickier to understand, but it's, it's still pretty basic, and I'm sure you'll get it. This one is A times B plus C is equal to A times B plus A times C. Basically, that's because of the way that multiplication works with parentheses, right? Because you multiply the A times the B plus the A times the C, right? And that just, this is basically just the long form of this, okay? So the, uh, if we plug this in, it's 2 times 3 plus 4 equals, uh, sorry, 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. Let's see if it works out. 3 plus 4 is 7, right? So 7 times 2, 14. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 times 4 is 8. 6 plus 8 equals, what do you have it? 14. Okay, so that was the uh, distributive property. And now, going on to a very simple one, the additive identity property. I'm sure you already knew this. This is very basic logic. It's a plus 0 equals a. This is basically just stating that 0 is a null value that uh, doesn't change the value of a, right? Because, I mean, 2 plus 0 equals 2. If you have two things and you get 0 more, you still have 2. It's nowhere around it. Okay. So that's the identity property of addition. The next property is the multiplicative identity property. This is also a pretty um, basic one. A times 1 equals A, right? Because plug it in. 2 times 1 equals 2. If you have one group of 2, you have 2. The next property, sorry if I'm going a little fast here, I'll go back over at the end, is the additive additive inverse property. So this means that a plus negative a equals zero. Uh, this one, this one's also pretty pretty easy if you think about it. Okay, because we know that the negative cancels out the positive here, right? So this becomes a minus a equals zero. Or if we plug in our values, two minus two equals zero. And yes, if you have two things and you take away two of them, then you have zero things left. Okay? So that was the uh, multiplicative identity property. And, or, sorry, rather, that was the additive inverse property. Sorry. Now, the multiplicative inverse property is a similar one, but it applies more to multiplication, as the name implies. Um, the multiplicative inverse property states that A times 1 over a equals 1. Please keep in mind for this one that a cannot equal 0, because if a equals 0, then this would be an undefined uh, fraction right here, because you can't have 0 as the denominator of a fraction, because there's no way to divide by 0. Um, so a, if a equals 2, then this is 2 times 1 half equals 1, right? And two halves equal one whole. I mean, it works with anything. Just try it. All these properties work with any number you can put in any real number. Three times one third, three thirds is one. Four fourths is one. So that is the multiplicative inverse property. And now on to the final property, the zero property. Okay? And this is another really easy one. The zero property states that a times zero equals zero. It's another one that makes sense. 2 times 0 equals 0, because 0 equals 0. Anything times 0 equals 0. If you have two groups of 0, it's going to equal 0. It doesn't matter how many groups of 0 you have. There are no groups, so that's how that works. Now, I'm going to go back over all of the formulas. The commutative property of addition. That's a plus b equals b plus a. The commutative property of multiplication. That's a times b equals b times a. The associative property of addition. That's a plus b plus c 
equals a plus b plus c. The associative property of multiplication, a times b times c equals a times b times c. The distributive property, a times b plus c equals a times b plus a times c. Okay? And the next one is the additive in identity property. a plus 0 equals a. The next one is the multiplicative identity property. a times 1 equals a. The additive inverse property, a plus negative a equals 1. Or 0, sorry. That wasn't my bad. Uh, the multiplicative inverse property, a times 1 over a equals 1. And last but not least, the 0 property. a times 0 equals 0. These are some basic rules that will help you a lot with all of the uh, math problems that you encounter this year in integrated algebra. And they're really basic, so um, you shouldn't have really a hard time understanding them. It's really just always keeping them in mind and remembering them. That'll, uh, that'll uh, be really important for you. And you should remember that throughout integrated algebra and throughout your math career. Thank you for watching.